I can pull this all the way to the left. In fact, it almost looks like we added a bit of flash to the image, like we had a softbox on the left side. This is the power in this simple natural light technique. Find the brightest part of your frame and put your subjects there. In this video, I'm gonna show you from shoot to post how this one simple tip is gonna level up your portraits. My name is Pai, and I'm one of the founders of Lynn and Jersa Photography and slrlounge.com. We're teaming up with Adorama to bring you a new series of photography tutorials called Master Your Craft right here on Adorama TV. So let's dive in. What's up friends, my name is Pai. Welcome to Adorama TV. Welcome to my humble abode. Well, my home office. Let's get straight into this. I'm always telling my photographers, our students, find the brightest spot in the frame and place your subjects there. This one simple compositional tip has such a dramatic impact on not only the actual composition itself, but your ability to edit. So this tutorial is basically one part shooting and one part editing. And when we get to the editing side, I do want you to download the exercise files, but I'll mention it when we get there. Let's start from the top. I'm gonna to show you the same tip kind of applied in a couple different genres. And first, from a shooting standpoint, what exactly are we talking about? Find the brightest spot of the frame and put your subjects there. Well, let's go to this wedding. This is a wedding that I recently photographed and these are my actual clients. And this was a test shot as they were kind of standing roughly where I wanted them to stand, right? So I kind of said, why don't you guys stand over there and I'm finding my composition. You'll notice from the behind the scenes, this is just a little hedge in front of a hotel. It's not like it's a, you know, grand forest type scene. It's literally right off the side of PCH in Huntington Beach. And we just have this little strip of greenery to kind of work with, but it's enough. Now in this shot, you'll notice, and just to you know quickly cover settings, I am at 1 1,000th of a second, F1.4 and ISO 400. I believe I'm shooting on the Sigma 35. Uh, maybe the 24. I can go ahead and just take a look to double check. So this is neither. That's the 50. Let's see here. That's the 50. That's the 50. This is the 24. Okay, so this is on the 50. So what I'm aiming for is I want to have, I obviously want to focus on the nature part of this shot, right? So I'm at 50 millimeters. I'm at f1.4 and I want to get some nice bokeh, some nice depth to the image. As soon as I take the test shot, I notice this. You can see it in the scene. It's this open area of sky directly behind them. You can even see part of the hotel in that area, right? So if I dim it down, you can see that the hotel is actually right in that spot. This is what I'm referring to as the brightest spot in the scene. See, it's where our eye naturally is drawn to when we look at the image. So when we place our subjects away from that area, then naturally we're not going to be looking toward it, right? Because our eyes are naturally drawn to the brightest spot in a photograph. So that's generally where we want our clients to be, where we want our subjects to be, so that our eyes are pulled in visually to the subject. And the subject doesn't necessarily have to be uh, a human, right? The subject can be really anything, but just know that your eyes are naturally drawn to the brightest spot in the frame. So when it comes to portraits, we can help the viewer out. We can make a more compelling image by simply adjusting camera position or subject position to put the subject in the brightest spot in the frame. So all I'm doing is I'm adjusting their feet positioning. I ask them just to move a little bit over to this other spot right here where they're just a few feet from where they were. So it's not moving far. And now I can frame them with the a very similar composition, right? So it's a super similar composition, but now they're over the brightest spot in the frame. Okay, so once we get the right expression, we land with this shot. And I'm going to go ahead and just create a virtual copy, and I'll reset this out. You know what? We don't even need virtual copies because we're going to do the editing from the ground up. I want you guys to see what it does. But first, let's compare the two images, right? Putting these side by side, you'll notice that they're, they're both exposed exactly the same, but visually, the one on the right is so much more interesting and it kind of holds our attention. A few things are happening. I mean, we did lower the perspective a little bit, but the main difference is the positioning of the couple. Our subjects are in the brightest spot in the frame, so naturally we're drawn in, but putting them there 
from the shooting standpoint is only one piece of this because the powerful part you're about to see is in post. Before we do get there, I want you to see the same example maybe in a different setting, right? So this is an engagement portrait. The brightest spot in the frame here, which this is from our Incredible Engagements course. So this is a full engagement photography course. And here we go, okay, the brightest spot in the frame is the sun. I'm gonna use the sun to kind of lead us into our subjects. And so we can use the sun as the brightest spot in the frame. We could also use a patch of light. So this is a shoot at a local, it's like a Newport mansion actually that we got access to. We took a couple models there and we're just doing some portraits. And this is just a, a window, uh, sorry, a door on the left side where light's coming in. So the brightest spot in the frame in this scene is just window light kind of landing right on her and she's positioned in front where it's mostly hitting her and then you know the background's a bit darker. Here, it's the sun that's the brightest spot in the frame. Here, it's just a bright sky. We're actually shooting this, by the way, so this isn't even like, <laughs> this is one o'clock p.m. This is really bad light, just a couple of weeks ago, actually. Uh, or by the time this goes up, it might be a month ago, but this is on the 17th of September and we're shooting at 1 p.m., so the light's pretty terrible. We're just angled, so it kind of looks like we have directional light, but we really don't, okay? But you see three different examples of it. One where we're just using the bright sky, one where we're using the sun itself, and one where we're just using a window light, you know, or, or a door, kind of natural lighting coming in through that side. Okay, enough jibber jabber. What I want you guys to do now is download the exercise files. I'm gonna make all three of these files available to you and you can find them in the description of the video. So go ahead and download the exercise files come back when you have them loaded in the Lightroom and click play again. What I'm gonna do is take the first image right here and this first piece is just, it's not critical, just apply the look that you like, right? So get to a look that you like, you can dial it in manually or you can use presets. I'm gonna go ahead and use Visual Flow Modern for this one. It's just a, a preset that's gonna give the image kind of a nice look. Um, it's gonna add a little bit of warmth to it. This is sort of our, our signature look for our studio, okay? Start with any baseline look you want. Th this part doesn't matter. What matters with this technique is what I'm about to show you next. Once you've placed your subjects in the brightest spot of your frame, this gives you the ability to now control light in a way that's dynamic, but also natural. And you have a lot of that control. So look, what I'm gonna do is actually grab just a radial filter and I'm just gonna drop it directly over the center between their heads. It's set to a negative 0.5 exposure burn. Okay, so it's just basically pulling down exposure. The feather is all the way up as well. Because they're in the brightest spot of the frame, what you've done is put your subjects in a place where there's automatically a natural vignette occurring around them. Think about this for a second. If they're in the brightest spot in the frame, then as the frame or the image extends out past them, everything is already getting a little bit darker, right? That means that we can exaggerate it and still have it look natural. So when I come into post, I can drop that radial burn on there and watch this. I'm gonna hold down Alter Option and just click and drag left on the pin. You could also go and just drag on the slider itself, but look, I can pull this all the way to the left and amazingly, even at a negative three exposure burn, it still looks natural. In fact, it almost looks like we added a bit of flash to the image, like we had a softbox on the left side, but we didn't. This is the power in this simple natural light technique. But look, for this one, I want this to be a little bit more on the subtle side. So I'm gonna bring the exposure burn up to one point negative 1.89, okay? Now watch, going to an even wider view. So these two images, I'm gonna go ahead and reset this so we can just apply it as we go. I'm gonna go to the next image. I'm gonna press previous. All I have to do, press shift M to bring up the radial filter, drag this right over the center again, and it works flawlessly. Go to the next image, press previous, shift M, Grab the brush, go over the subjects. I'm gonna shrink this one down. Boom, flawless. I mean, we've gone from this to this in moments 
using natural light. A couple other tips when you're using this technique is when you expose, you do want to make sure that you have as much detail as you can possibly have. And, and by that, I mean expose to the left, meaning your shadows are pushed all the way to the left side, but without clipping your shadows. This is the same thing I say almost every time, right? Let the camera pick up whatever highlights it can. It's okay if some of the highlights are blown. That looks natural. It's not okay if shadows are clipped. That's going to look weird. Your skin tones are going to look funky. So shoot raw and start with the right exposure. But once you place your subjects in the light, you get an amazing effect. Now, just to show you, I can't do the same thing to an image. This image, they're close to the center of the, the light source, right? They're close, but they're still not in the right spot. And that means that when I bring that burn, so if I bring that burn right to them, I start to get this unnatural look where the bright area of the frame is also being pulled down. But see, when they're in the center of the frame, that area is being left bright. And so we're naturally playing into the, the scene's sort of natural vignette. Okay, look at the same thing on this image. I'm going to, again, all you're going to do is apply the look that you want to have. So I'm going to fix the horizon line. And I'm going to go in, for this one, I'll do mood pack. Mood pack is kind of like a rustic vibe and look. I'm going to select HDR. It's a lighting condition that's going to bring out all the detail in this scene, right? Again, start with whatever look you want. You want to look into visual flow? Cool. You want to design your own look? Fine. Use other presets? Cool. Start with a look. I'm going to go ahead and make an exposure adjustment. I'm going to pull contrast up. This looks awesome. I love the warmth that it has to it. And now I'm going to do the same thing. Radial burn right over my subjects. I can take this up or down as much as I want. And it's still going to look and feel natural because they're already in the brightest spot of the frame. Does it apply to scenes like this? Of course. Let's go back to mood again. I'm going to choose soft light because the scene was shot in soft lighting. I'm going to go ahead and make a correction for the composition a little bit. We'll just pull it in, center her up. Same thing. Radial burn right over the center. And I can pull and tweak and adjust to my heart's content. Okay. If I don't want it to be on her arm down here below, go to the brush, hold down alter option, and just paint off the body down here. Okay. And then you can simply add it back to the side. There's other ways of doing this too. So for example, here I'm using radial filters, right? But if I wanted to, I could lower all the exposure and I could go into my brushes and in the retouching toolkit is a full set of dodging and burning and retouch brushes. What I want you guys to do is if you want to look into it, then fine, but you don't have it. Cool. Just pause the video, dial in these settings because this is going to selectively dodge highlights. See when I've already placed my subject in that spot, I can selectively control everything, right? And it's, and it's easy. We don't even have Lightroom is coming with some new masking abilities soon, which is going to be incredible. But right now I'm just using the basic masking and I can still have this level of control. Hold alter option on this. I can dial it backwards. I can get to exactly where I want it to be. And it looks fantastic. I can even add the radial burn over this. So I could say, okay, this looks really good. Now what I'll do is I'll do a, a little bit of a burn over the entire image. And all of this was simply because we started with that basic compositional rule, that basic tip of find the brightest spot in the frame and place your subjects there. That's it. So I want you guys to have a, a concrete understanding of this technique. And I kind of felt like to really know what it is that I'm, I'm constantly saying and reiterating with find the brightest spot, put your subjects there. You have to see it from shoot all the way through to the editing side. That's it for this video. I hope you all enjoyed. If you did, I'd love for you to comment below. I do read your comments. It gives me ideas on what to do next. So if there's things you want to learn, let me know. Meantime, it helps us out tremendously to give the video a like, to subscribe to the channel. We have amazing creators that are posting content every single day. And look, if you like learning from me and you like this style of education, I would love for you to check out srloungeworkshops.com. This is really for professional wedding and portrait photographers that want to get themselves to a place where they can work professionally and create an entire business around that thing you love, which is taking pictures. That's it for me. 
So I'll see you guys back here, same time, same place next week. Peace.